Hey guys, I'm Graham. I'm Stephanie. And we are the Friels. Mm -hmm. And in this video, we have our holiday mugs, our Christmas mugs. Not matching because the other one with his was dirty, or that one was dirty. Oh. Wonderful. We, man, since having quintuplets, we've gotten a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. A lot of questions. Yeah. And so we put out a little poll. Yeah. And asked. You guys just send them even more questions because we didn't have enough. Holy moly. <laughs> that was way more than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and we're going to try to answer them. Yeah. And who knows? It might have to be a two-part. Not sure. This could be a two-part video. There's a lot of questions. Hopefully not. Um, they're all really good questions. They're all very good questions. Yeah. I feel like some of these questions we could spend a whole video on, but we're not going to do that. No. We are notoriously long-winded. Yep. And um, we're going to... Some of these we're just going to fly through and not go... Super deep, but we just thought it'd be a fun video <clears throat> to yeah. answer the questions. Because a lot of these are really, really common questions we get asked all the time. All the time, yeah. Um, and we probably should organize those to do those first, but whatever. You, well, uh, okay. I did organize it a little bit. I will say oh, that. Cool. Nice. Um, the very first few questions are more about like coming home, I guess, right after the babies were born. Second part is about the babies more so. Third part of these questions is about us. Um, we have a few more infertility questions, and then kind of the last few questions are very random, just like cool. spitball, answer them real fast. I am going to, uh, in the description of the video, I will chapter every single question into the video. So it's if you see something that interests you, you can just skip ahead. Cool. So you can do that um, on the YouTube. Technology. YouTube's. Technology. If you're watching on Facebook, I don't think it's a possibility. Yeah, but, sorry. Sorry, Facebookers. Okay, let's hop in. Yeah, I guess we'll... Yeah, we, we have forty eight questions to get through, which <laughs> sounds overwhelming. I this might, but be, some of these are really quick. Okay, but we have to stop. This might be unrealistic. Here. We got to like go to it. Can we give a quick recap on what coming home was like? Quick <laughs> recap. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, so I'm assuming that's talking about like airplane, like flying home stuff like that. So we had seven adults fly home with us. Um, it was his parents, my mom, my niece, my sister, and us, of course, and then obviously the babies. We um, bought tickets for two of the babies, and then the other three babies were lap infants. It went really smoothly. We contacted the airline, what up, Allegiant, and they were super accommodating and really helpful. They let us board first. Uh, a family friend of ours that I knew growing up was actually a flight attendant for Allegiant, and we contacted her. She changed her shift to that day, so she was on the flight with us. Honestly, that was pretty quick recap. It went really, really well. Uneventful, which is great. Yeah, it went really like we got there early enough to be able to even get some food, and then we got on the flight, and security was easy. I mean, easy. We had to take all the babies out of the car seats. That was kind mm -hmm. of annoying. And Harper pooped. In her. That's right. That was the most eventful part. Okay. Harper pooped, and it, it was. While we're going through security, right? It was a blowout yeah. through security. Did you so, say what up? Yeah. Um, so we had to clean that really, anyways. But yeah. Uneventful, really. Uneventful, in a good way. which is good. Babies slept pretty much the whole flight. Yep, yep. We fed them on the plane. So Graham got the balls ready. Yep, that's that's good. For, there we go. So it went great. And I have a, I did film, so we might have a, a, a video to put out yeah. offline. But it was so uneventful. It's honestly going to be a boring video. Boring video, yeah. <laughs> the longest part was checking in. I would say checking in. And part. shout out to Allegiant Airlines. They were awesome. Yeah. Cool. I already gave them a shout out, but question. Second shout out. Second shout out. Second shout out. All right, you got that second question. Second question. Um, are any of them, the babies, identical, and how can we tell them apart? Hmm. They, uh, no baby is identical, nope. which is cool. Nope, nope. They're, I don't know, people, people think they look super similar online, yeah. I guess. Like, we get, this is probably the most, com this is in the top three questions. How twins? can you tell them apart, I would say. And are any of them twins? Or any of the uh, are, <laughs> are any of them twins? And um, yeah, we at this point it's very easy to tell yeah. them apart. They all look very different. They look like siblings. So none are identical. Yep, that answers that. Okay, next question: Do we have a lot of help? Uh, yes and no. Um, we have had a lot of people reach out and ask if they can help in any way. We've had a lot of people, um, like when we first got home, people made meals for us. My family is here, here and there, I guess. Um, my parents kind of live half here, Montana. Um, but 
I mean, for the most part, we actually really just like it by ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like that. I'm like, so yes, we have the ability to have a lot of help, but we don't really require it, nor do we necessarily like it. Oh, Does that make sense? Like it is a little too harsh. Well, not, okay, but I mean, I prefer it just to be us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think, uh, I feel like we've had just enough help. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Like people have made us food. Yeah, that's um, been nice. That's been a huge help. People have, but it's also been nice to make food again. <laughs> but think of other ways people have helped. Like yeah. people have given us diapers. Yes. We've, we've purchased maybe one box of diapers in all of this. Yeah, it's true. Um, people have really helped in other ways, not just their time. And we haven't had to buy clothes for the babies. People have yes. pretty much bought all their clothes we've needed until they're probably about a year old, which is pretty wild. Um, but I feel like most of the time people ask about the help is usually like physical help coming in to help. And we don't really have a whole lot of that. Yeah. But we don't feel overwhelmed by not having a lot of that either. So I feel like we're running a, a nice tight ship. There we like go. It's, it's going well. We've hit some storms, but we got it under control. What storms? What? What storms? <laughs> what storms? <laughs> Next uh. question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I guess it kind of goes off of that other question is, have we paid for any help? So, like, I guess that would be, like, night nurses and People stuff. were interested in knowing, like, did we hire, like, a nurse team to come in at night yeah. and take care of the babies? You need to answer that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have not done that. I have no desire for that. No. I, under- I do understand, like, yeah. why sometimes people would need that. Like, say, your babies weren't sleeping through the night and well, you just, like... I mean, like, your body can't function if you're not getting sleep. Well, and also, you think about people who, like, go to, physically go to work. Yes. Yeah. And neither of us have to do that. Yeah. You work from home. I'm obviously home with the baby. So, like, we don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it would be a very different story if you had to, like, leave and be gone the entire day. I'd agree. Or something. So. This is answering a future question, but all the babies are doing great, too. So, it yeah. would be one thing if... Yeah. Some of the babies had some complications. We would, we might need to hire people then, um, but they're all doing great. So, yes, we have not paid for help. Yep. Thankfully. There we go. Next question is, what are the baby's names? So I'll go in birth order. It's Adeline Catherine, Eliana Rose, Linnea Claire, Fisher Douglas, and Harper Lynn. Harper Lynn? Friels. <laughs> yep. Awesome. And let's see, do we ever call them the wrong names? Um, not really. The only, it's only like only me. Only when you're like <laughs> tripping. Not because you're like you think that that's the baby's name. It's because it's like there's so many names that you like. Growing up for me, my parents would go through. I feel like everybody's name before they got to my name. Not because they forgot it was my name, but just there's a lot of them. I yes. Yeah. But you, I think you've done it more than. Yeah, it kind of like what Steph was saying. It's not like I'm looking at Harper and I accidentally call her Adeline because I think she's Adeline. Yeah, yeah. It's because parent brain is a real thing. And sometimes Eliana and Linnea with the L's. Yeah, I've, I've definitely called like, I've done like Adeliana sometimes. I've mixed <laughs> them up <laughs> where you say two names at once. <laughs> um, but yeah, we actually, it's, we can tell them apart. Um but for the most part, yeah, we're not calling them the wrong names. Nope. We got Keep it handled. Picture. Yep. Yeah. Someone did ask how we came up with the baby's names as well. Real fast. Uh, it's not really fast, but... Or maybe this is... I would just say it was... We always tell people the pressure was off because we had five. Yeah. Yeah. Because you use all your favorite names. Mm-hmm. Versus when you have one, you had to pick one. Yeah. Your favorite name. We've, I will say this. We've always had Fisher's name because it is a family name. Mm-hmm. Fisher is Graham's middle name, and it also the name Fisher goes back to your family quite mm-hmm. a bit. So we've always had his name. Everybody else's took a little more time. Yeah. And then the other ones we just kept working at. Yeah. We, we started, we came up with Adeline Catherine in the summer, the summer. of 2022. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then just over a year, we worked on names. Not that we knew we were going to have five, but... We just had a list of... Yeah. As soon as we found out we were pregnant with five. Yeah. <laughs> there was more flexibility. Like we need at least five. <laughs> yeah. Just in case all of them were the same. Anyways. But yeah, that's... I mean, that's mm-hmm. simple. Short, I guess. Next couple questions is what week were the babies born at and what were they 
weight, what were their weights when they were born? Stephanie went into labor at 27 weeks and one day, right? Mm-hmm. But then the babies were born at 27 weeks and two days. Yep. Which is really cool. It's important. Which is important that the they got an extra day. day. Mm-hmm. Um, every day counts when mm-hmm. you're carrying quintuplets. It was earlier than we wanted. Yeah. But it was actually, it was, now that it the babies are here, Stephanie's recovering great. Um, all the babies are great. It's They seem to have come at the perfect time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not to say it wasn't terrifying. Yeah. That night was mm-hmm. pretty crazy. It was yeah. pretty wild. But. Okay. And their weights when they were born. Um, Alan was 2'2". Two, two. Eliana was 2'2". Two, two. Linnea was 2'3". Fisher was 2'3". And Harper was 2'5". And their weights today are... Adeline is 11'3". Mm, something like that. Something like that. Eliana was 10'8". Something like that. <laughs> something like that. Um, Linnea was a, like 10.7 something. Harper was like 11.7. And then Fisher's like 13 and a half pounds now. Yeah. He's a big dude. Actually, I think Harper got to 12 pounds. Yes, maybe so. I think Harper got to 12 pounds. We are, we're weighing them every week. We're keeping track of that. So. Yeah. Give, yeah. So give they're gaining it. weight. They're gaining weight and they're doing great. Yep. Yep. Cool, cool. We've got some NICU questions. Mm-hmm. You ready? I feel like I... Can I just ask these and then you answer the, the sure. NICU ones? Let's do that. Okay. Um, okay. How long were the babies in the NICU for? I don't know. I'm joking. <laughs> they were... <laughs> on average, it was like 60 to 70 days. I actually kind of forget the exact yeah, days. 64 to... 9 to 11 weeks. 9 to 11 Maybe weeks. Maybe I should answer them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there was specifically a NICU nurse asked what can we as a NICU nurse do to make things better? Hmm. I would just say we had an awesome experience with our NICU nursing yeah, staff. Yeah, we did. Like, I don't, it's very hard to come up with anything bad. Yeah. Um, all the nurses were amazing. Like, to not be dramatic, I, like, I literally believe they're angels on earth. Um, and I fully believe that they are the reason our babies are doing so well. Like, I give them all the credit. And, um, and the doctor's staff. And, of course, God. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're just so thankful for everything they did. I mean, if I had to like pick something, I would just say I like research. I like understanding things. So it would be cool maybe to have printouts of like why we're doing something that day. Yeah. So I could understand it a little bit more. Yeah. I feel like there are only a couple times and I think this is really just because it's more of a routine for them. So maybe it's not, it doesn't come as naturally to like mention it. I feel like there were sometimes when they didn't tell us when something was happening or like they were doing something like mm. doing tests or something like that. But like for the big things, like they always, like they called us and, and whatnot. So it wasn't like, but for a parent that doesn't understand or know that this is a normal thing to be doing mm. with preemies or just NICU babies, um, it can seem scary even though it's like, it's actually not. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes. And I would, the only thing I'd add to it all is We've talked about this in previous videos. We always knew our babies were going to go to the NICU. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which made life, it made it emotionally much easier yeah. for us because we knew that was what was going to happen. Yep. And in fact, because they were so good at their job, I felt super comfortable leaving our babies there. Yep. I had another yeah, friend have a baby during the time that our babies were born. Yeah. And his son stayed in the NICU. And they weren't expecting it. And I think it was kind of hard on him and his wife. It was a different NICU, but... Different NICU, yeah. Um, But no, we love the NICU. Everyone at St. Joseph's NICU, we love you guys. Yeah. And I would say they did a really good job at being... I don't even know how to describe it. Like, they always were like, how you doing, mama? And like, I don't know, it was like super, almost like endearing, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it was just like really sweet. And that was like the first time anybody ever like really called me like mom. Which was really cool. So, mm. I don't know. That was really sweet. They were all really sweet and amazing. So I'll say something I really liked specifically. I mean, there's a million things. Yeah. But they did an amazing job of making sure that Stephanie got to hold the babies as soon as yeah. possible. Like, yes, they were protected and they took preventative measures to keep them safe. But they also wanted Stephanie to hold yeah. her babies, our babies, as fast as possible. And not only that, just getting you involved. Getting us involved. Like, they yeah. has changed di- start changing diapers I feel like relatively early on. Yeah. And that was uh, that was an experience. Cool. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Next NICU question. Um, this is kind of a NICU question. It's more of a baby question. 
Uh, do the babies have any long-term health complications? Um, no complications at all, I yeah, would say. That's amazing. The only thing that sort of happened at the beginning was when they're preemies, they don't, um, I guess it's, I, they were telling us the sphincter for the stomach doesn't hold down food or doesn't close. Oh, so yeah, our babies spit up. They like, have really bad reflux. Yeah, like really, really bad reflux. They still have it, but it was too. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning was way worse. Yes, they've gotten a lot better. You can tell it's like growing, I guess. So every time you feed your baby, you're like, is there something wrong with my baby? Um, <laughs> but no, there, there are no complications. Like it's unreal. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. And it's mind blowing. Yeah. It's sometimes you forget how amazing it is because yeah. this is our life every day. But when you take a moment to realize just how well everyone is doing, we're just like, we're blown away. We're yeah. so thankful. Yeah. And I didn't, honestly, like I didn't even realize so many babies do go home with like feeding tubes or oxygen. Mm-hmm. And when people found out that our babies came home without either of those things, they were like, like blown away. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, wow, that is actually really amazing and cool. So it's pretty neat. They're pretty awesome. I don't think you'd ever know that they were born at 27 weeks. No, literally somebody visited today and they're yeah. like, they don't look like preemies. Yeah. <laughs> Other than they kind of look small for their technical age. Yeah, they age. look younger for their but yeah, age. But they're, they're fun. They're great. They so we're fun. so thankful. Yeah. Yeah. Was moving to Phoenix and working with Dr. Elliot in St. Joseph's worth it? Absolutely. 100,000%. <laughs> we were just talking about that with someone today. Again, um, we live close to Seattle, so we probably could have found someone that was willing to work yeah with us um but yeah we don't regret going down at all i mean mm-hmm. dr elliot and his team every one of them the, they just have experience with this yeah they know how to we were talking about how like their sonographers know how to take measurements of five babies yeah in utero yeah um and keep track of them oh she did such a great job keep track of yeah. them that's crazy and the saint joseph's nicu staff everyone there the doctors they're amazing. Yeah. And great. just besides that, I think being in a warmer climate with more sunlight, a pool. If we had gone to see, had to go to Seattle for winter while I was pregnant, I don't, it would have been. A and whole, the traffic. <laughs> it would have been a whole different. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. It would have really sucked. <laughs> she said suck. She said it. <laughs> she said it. <laughs> Um, it would not have been fun. It would not have been fun. Also, it was just really fun to go to a new place together. Yeah. Like, especially before the craziness of this season of our life, it was really cool for it to just be us. Yeah. Like, we had we met people there, but it was kind of just us in it's a new place. Us, yeah. And I feel like we had a good time, besides you being sick <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Got better after the babies were born. Yes. Um, we do not regret moving. No. At all. It was great. 10 out of 10 recommend if mm-hmm. you have pregnant with quintuplets. Okay. I'll ask this question. Mm-hmm. How are people want to know, how are you doing? Have you experienced any postpartum depression? How's the C-section? Healing. How's recovery. all that? How's all that going? Um, one, I don't have any other pregnancies to compare it to. Mm. So this is, I guess, my recovery <laughs> experience. And I, it's not been bad. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, which is just again seems crazy to me, because I carried five babies and I'm a tiny little person as my first pregnancy. How tall are you? I'm five two. What was your beginning weight? Uh, I'm not gonna talk about that. Uh-huh. I'm just kidding. Um, one twenty five. Yeah. It's crazy. Small, small person. Anyways, no, I did not experience any postpartum depression. Um, and healing physically has been going really, really great. I feel like even the, I, I remember after when the babies are born, all the doctors doing, like they stitch, they don't really stitch you up anymore. They kind of just glue you up. They like glued me up, got me all back together. And literally one of them goes, wow, you can't even tell that scar is there. And I was like, wait, what? Really? And like, you can, obviously you can still see it, but it it healed up so well. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. What are you doing on a regular basis? Walking. Yeah. Walking and then I do some like core, I do some core exercises and stuff to try. I still have a little bit, I guess it's not, uh, I don't know if it's technically diagnosed, but a little bit of like that, the diastasis recti where you have a mm-hmm. little bit of separation still. Um, but that's like still like slowly going mm-hmm. back together. 
yeah. again. So it, it doesn't feel nearly as, I guess, jelly-like, if that mm. makes sense. Like when I'm moving around and stuff, I feel a little bit stronger and more firm. And so that's kind of cool because I can tell it's all getting better. Yeah. But for the most part. Considering that you grew five humans, you're, yeah, you're I crushing know. it. I'm, it's insane. It's wild. It's, but I'm doing great. I'm doing okay, great. Okay, considering that you grew five humans <laughs> and your body was cut open. It just... <laughs> men... If you ever have the chance to be in the room during a C-section, <laughs> you will appreciate women who go through a C-section and probably much more. Probably Thank you, mother, for the <laughs> C-section you had for me. <laughs> and probably uh, regular births, too. And re- I, But I have never yeah, seen I mean, a regular birth. That's true, birth. that's true, yes. that's true, that's true. I guess I've watched a couple YouTube videos. No. no. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, um, but emotionally, how are you doing? I said great. I answered that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm doing good. She's killing it. She's great. I love my babies too much to be too too blessed to stress. Blessed. Too blessed. Or be depressed. Okay. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Graham, how are we doing? I'm included for this one. Yeah. Yay. It says we. We're doing great. Um I would say overall amazing. We love being parents. Mm-hmm. This is what we like we always wanted. I don't think like we ever visualized quintuplets. We never, yeah, we never <laughs> visualized this, but. But we, I would say we did visualize. We always wanted a big family, and we have a baby screaming on the monitor. Early on in our dating life, we talked about having a lot of kids, and uh, it it happened. <laughs> it did. And in so one full swoop. We love it. Um, literally, like our last. Christmas card we I usually do like a little letter and we talked about our dream was to have a big family and then that year uh I we wrote we, the letter and then probably like a week later or probably two three weeks later we found out it was five yeah we found out it was five so it's pretty wild yes but we're doing great um doesn't mean it's not difficult it is very hard for me I'm a very social person and we have we'll talk about this more later but our social life has definitely died down mm-hmm. which is understandable and figuring out how to work still has been hard as like me being the one providing i think i feel the pressure 10x 100x than i ever did 5x (laughs) um yeah i feel that pressure a lot more and but the hardest part is there's not a lot of time to work but we're getting better at it too Mm -hmm. i would say we came home almost three months ago yeah we came home almost three months ago and it's been three months it's kind of a night and day difference of like yeah. how our day is operating. It mm-hmm. feels a lot less like running around with our heads cut off and more of like we're under control. Mm-hmm. We got the stabili- the, We got the situation stabilized. Stabilized. Yeah, right? That's what Dave Ramsey said. Mm-hmm. So, but as a couple, I think we're doing great. Um, I feel like we're closer in marriage than we've ever been. Mm-hmm. We don't have a lot of time together. Ish. It's not the same, but it's better. It's way. different. It is different. But yeah, overall, I think we're doing great. Yeah, next question. I concur. What's a what does a typical day look like for us? So our morning routine, middle of the day, night routine, go. You ready? Okay. I get up at seven. No, sorry, I get up at six a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I get up at six a.m. I pump, I get bottles ready, I feed them at seven. I let them, I change diapers, I let them take a little nap, I eat breakfast, I pump, I wash bottles, um, and then I, I say eat breakfast, I get bottles ready again, <laughs> feed them, we kind of do a little playtime, diapers, they usually take another little nap, and then you take the next feed. I think we have like five main shifts in the day, mm-hmm. and Stephanie takes the first two mm-hmm. shifts. So that's feeding them, uh, feeding the babies, diapers, cleaning bottles, a lot of pumping for Stephanie. Mm-hmm. How, how many pump sessions do you do? Uh, six and then a breastfeed. Then the afternoon session is when I feed them, like right around 2.30. Stephanie gets out. She gets to go on a walk. If it's nice out. If it's nice out. Well, um, if not, I do some other sort of physical activity. Yeah. And then, I don't know, we kind of try and wrap up our day around 5 p.m. in terms of more random stuff and mm-hmm. then usually we do dinner mm-hmm. pretty normally at 5 30 
And probably the best time of the day is what? Family time. Family time. Oh. And that's from roughly like 6 to 8 p.m.? Yeah, 6.30-ish. And eight. which is, that session is fun because that's when you get to... Breastfeed. Yeah. So I feel like it's a little bit more of a motherly time. Yeah, it's with, fun. So he feeds the other four and I feed one. But um, we do it all together. Feed. Yeah. And so it's um, nice because we still get to like interact with each other and stuff. It's the f- only feed we do together during mm-hmm. the day. And I try to f- play more with them too mm-hmm. during that time. When I feed them at 2.30, I'm a little bit more strict. I guess. <laughs> Not strict, but trying to keep it moving quickly because I got to get back to work. But mm-hmm. um, family time is fun. I feel like it's like there's no quickness to it all. Yeah. A little bit slower. Time. Mm-hmm. Unless they start getting really tired and start screaming. Yes. Then we <laughs> wrap it up and we get them in bed. Once they go crazy, that's when it's time to put them up. Yeah. And um, so after... So then we do diapers and we swaddle them up. Put them in bed. Sometimes read a story. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get to hang out for a little bit, just you and I. It's honestly... Or we do this. The family time is like probably my favorite time of the day, but then maybe like close second is like when it's just us too. Mm-hmm. It's like the one time of the day where we don't have anything else we need to be doing and we can just talk yeah. and catch up on how we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that time. And then Stephanie goes to bed. Yeah. Right around... I try to get in bed by 9.30 yes. at the latest. At if the latest. I can do earlier, then that's more nice. And then after that, I feed them at roughly 10.30, 11, one more time, do a night feed, try to get them mm-hmm. down by midnight, and then I clean bottles again. Then clean, you come to bed. Then I come to bed after that. Yeah. And then we sleep, and, and the babies sleep until I get them up in the morning again. I used to have so much trouble falling asleep. Not anymore. Fall right to sleep, and when that alarm goes off, I don't understand. It's... It's, it feels like you just went to bed. It, it feels like I literally just yep. went to bed. Yep. So that's kind of crazy. But I mean, that's our day. It's yeah. It's nonstop, but it is simple. Yeah. Somebody else also asked if we could do a day in the life video. Yes. So a day we in the life. Talked, we haven't talked about this before. Yeah, we have a little bit. Yeah, have we? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. We will do a day in the life video. Someday. Someday. Don't know when yet. Don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah, we'll get around to Eventually. it. Eventually. Next question, me? Yeah. Oh, can we do a day in the life video? Yes, yeah. we will do it. <laughs> That's why I said that. <laughs> That's what the one... That's why I said uh, that. <laughs> okay, hold on. Then you just do the next question. Okay. How did we survive nights early on? We pretty much didn't see each other. Yeah, basically. Yeah. We saw each other for like a few hours in the evenings. Yeah. Basically was it. So what we did was Stephanie took care of the babies during the day. Yep. And then I took care of the babies all through the night. Yeah. Because um, I I do better getting up early, and I feel like you do better staying up late. Yeah. So that was kind of how we did that. And then we did get to see each other for, I don't even know how long it was, only a couple hours, three hours, a few hours in the evenings. In the evenings. Yeah. I would get up around, I don't know, like 2 or 3 p.m. Yeah. And I guess afternoons, evenings. So then I would try to get my work done then, I think. No, you did in the middle of the night. That's true. It's been a while. It's been a while. They've been um, sleeping through the night for a while yeah. now. It's been great. But we would still have our family time, which is cool. We still mm-hmm. have, we were committed to family time together. And then I stayed up all night. And it was difficult, but it was kind of fun, too, because there's no one in the house that was up <laughs> besides me. And I don't know. It was kind of just fun hanging out with the babies then yeah. and getting my work done. Um, but that's what we did for probably the first two or three months. No, it's... We went August through yeah. October. August through October. Probably seen through the night. A month and a half so yeah. far. So two and a half months maybe. I think one night I was just like realized that they weren't feeding that well anymore for that middle of the night feed. And I was like, why are we still doing this? And we just decided to try and let them sleep. And they did. It yeah. was pretty much that simple. It basically took like two nights and they all they all slept through the night. Yeah. Pretty much. So. So that's how we did it early on. Which the next questions are literally how did we get them to sleep through the night and did we sleep train i would say it all started with a good foundation in the NICU yeah yeah because they were on a really good schedule already Mm -hmm. so it was really easy to kind of push the limits there i feel like with the night feeds and stuff yeah and they were already kind of going like it was it was pretty easy for them to go like six hours in the night like five to six hours Mm -hmm. in the night and then you had that yeah like what you said like why are we doing it like this why don't we yeah try it the NICU did an awesome job of getting them on the schedule. I would say even if you have a 
perfectly normal, healthy baby, you should just take him to the NICU for a month? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is why our videos are too long. <laughs> you say things like that. <laughs> but no, they did an awesome job of putting them on the schedule. And um, we really owe it all to them. And it's very helpful. We just made sure we stayed on the schedule once they came home. Yeah. And eventually we just tried, can they sleep through the night? Some things that we have done, though, to make sure that they sleep through the night is we we try to keep them pretty active during the day as much as an infant can be yeah. active. And that basically means once they're out of the crib, they stay out of the crib for the day yeah. for the most part. Yeah, for the um, most part. Sometimes they'll take a nap in their cribs during the day. but For the most part, we try to keep them outside. Not outside, outside, but <laughs> in, the in the living room. room. And um, we never re-swaddle them until it's nighttime. Mm-hmm. But and we try to hold them, interact with them, and by the time it's nighttime, they're they're tired. Yeah, they're ready to go to sleep. I'm like literally, they will start like crying, and I'm like, you literally slept so much today. How? And they sleep the whole night. It's amazing. I don't. Yeah. It's pretty incredible, actually. Focus on full feeds too. Yeah. Focus on full feeds. Baby Wise is a really good book for us too mm-hmm. to kind of start to understand. Yeah. How to do it all. But even just with, specifically with multiples. Like, you have to stick to that schedule. Yes. Or else it's not going to work. Yeah. I don't really know how we would do it with one baby, honestly. I wish but. we could say, like, we had a magic solution, for, nope. but it's just they were that easy. We just tried it, and they did it. Yeah. So. Pretty cool. That was, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is our bottle prep system? Take the lead on this one. It has changed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We... If you do research on high order multiples or when we first found out we had quintuplets, we, um, we joined a Facebook group and a lot of people in that group, kind of the strategy was get like 40 bottles basically Mm -hmm. and get all the bottles ready at night or the night before. And you just heat them up in the morning. Um, you keep them in your fridge and we tried doing something very similar to that. And, but basically you would let like 40 bottles collect on your kitchen counter all day. It looks so messy. We even got a different, we got a separate dishwasher, like a big one that we set on top of the counter to wash them all at night. Mm -hmm. And I would spend like an hour just rinsing out bottles at night. And I was like, and they would come out of the dishwasher. They wouldn't be clean. They wouldn't be clean. And it was just super frustrating. So we realized 40 bottles was not going to be the answer. No, that was not fun. Yeah. We didn't like that. So we were like, let's just go down to five bottles and hand wash them yep. every feed. So that's what we do now is we just hand wash the bottles, put them in the sanitizing machine. Yep. Um, sanitizes and dries them, which is really nice. Yes. And so, yeah, we realized 40 bottles maintaining all that was not our solution. That was not fun. To the madness. We just prefer washing them every time. And... Um, it's funny because we prefer it, but we also don't prefer it. Because it's very draining. Uh, this an- is answering a future question, but hate washing bottles. It's probably the worst part about all this. <laughs> yeah. I would rather change five poopy diapers. Yeah, all day. Um, and it doesn't even take that long. Ugh. Probably the next thing people are wondering. Oh, is if they are exclusively having breast milk or formula. Mm-hmm. Um, one or the other or more. But um, yeah, so I'm pumping, which I feel like we've mentioned a lot. Round the clock. Not round the clock, but I do pump a decent amount. Mm -hmm. Um, And they all get at least one full feed of breast milk. And then... Per day. Per day. Yeah. And then during family time, I breastfeed one of them. Um, Yeah. And just kind of rotate them through each day. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, they were fully on breast milk until really it was like right before they came home. So that was kind of cool. But no, they do... We do a goat milk formula. Um, Yeah. Yeah. um, we, We found an awesome company actually located in washington called mount capra and um they that's the formula we're using now and you actually make the formula yourself which is really cool you mix all the ingredients together it is a dry mix we don't need to talk about it because we have a whole video about it (laughs) i would just say the question is how much formula do they consume Uh, um they're all drinking about five ounces per feed 25 ounces per day per baby yes so what is that, 125 ounces? As simple as we can put it. They're drinking a lot of yeah, formula. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, we go through one batch in two days. Moving on from feed, from the feeding topics. All right. This is the more fun stuff. Who does each baby look like most in the family? Each baby? Yeah, go through them all. 
Um, if you look at Adeline in a picture, if you look like look at a picture of me when I was a baby, and you look at Adeline, I feel like we look similar. Mm-hmm. Eliana, I feel like looks like your mom, which is crazy, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Linnea, I feel like she looks like me and a little bit of my sister. Mm-hmm. But I don't think everybody agrees with that. Um, Fisher looks like me, I think. Yeah, he does. I will say he looks like Graham, but I think it's just because he's a boy they say that. Yeah. And then Harper, I think, looks like you when you were a baby. If you saw a picture of, of you when you were a baby, I think so. They're all but, cute, though. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I, I, we've also had people say that they are like a good mix of both of us, so mm-hmm. I don't... Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes Harper even looks like my mom when she was younger. Too. Yes, so it's, it's, yeah, it's very stra- It's very interesting. It's all genetics are very wild. Inter- genetics, yeah. Genetics are crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Do the babies have personalities? They do. Yeah. We so I'll go through the order again. Adeline is she has her silly moments, mm-hmm. and then we also say she's kind of the jealous one. So if you're holding another baby and she sees you holding that baby. She's the one who she will... almost like yells at you and says like, "Hey, <laughs> hey!" <laughs> it's not so a cry, it's not a whine. It's just a hey, hey, ha! Ah! Um, she's kind of the most. She's become the most restless one, almost. Yeah, a little bit. Like if we're sitting in church, she tends to be the one that starts squirming the most. So that's Adeline. Eliana is our silly, silly. goose. She's a silly one. Yeah, her nickname is becoming Silly Ellie. Because why do we call her that? Because she's silly. Yeah. Just everything we do, she just starts laughing and smiling. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. You make any face at her and she's like, yeah, so happy. Um, Linnea, she's starting to become more silly too. Yeah. She's, but she's very curious. She's, yes, very. She's always like looking around. And then we've talked about this. Eliana is very interested in people. So she wants to look at people that are in the room. But like Linnea, just like. She wants to look at everything. Looks at the ceiling fan. Yeah. yeah. Um, Fisher. He's a boy. Yeah, he's just a cute, cuddly boy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's cute. He's fun. He kind of likes. He's probably gonna be a mama's boy, <laughs> which I'm okay with. Yeah, and then Harper. She used to be our feistiest. Yes. But she's not as feisty anymore. Um, but she's like, I feel like she's gonna be pretty strong-willed. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think she. I think she's she's gonna go after what she wants. <laughs> she was strong willed in the womb. She literally like <laughs> shift like shoved everybody. Over. Somehow was able to push four of the babies down, mm-hmm. and then towards the end of St- Stephanie's pregnancy, her belly was literally mm-hmm. sideways, cockeyed, and yeah, it was wonky. Um, but she loves to snuggle a lot. She does, and she's really becoming silly too. They're all kind of mm-hmm. becoming silly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's kind of. I like what you said. I think she's going to get what she wants. Yeah. She has that spirit to her. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. And she's got some big old thighs. <laughs> That's nothing to do with her personality. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> she's wonderful. She is. The, uh, the next question is kind of funny because it, it is specifically from the picture that we posted asking people to ask us questions more or less. Yes. And it's, are any of them redheads? Or I've seen like, Looks like there's a lot of redheads in yes. there, just stuff like that. And we do not have a single redhead. We don't. Um, the reason they look like they have red hair is because when we got the pictures taken, it was during sunset, and the sun was peeking through some trees and shining directly onto their heads. Yep. So it's just a whole lighting thing. We do not have any redheads. Glad we cleared that off. Cleared. We had a lot of people. We, <laughs> we probably had like five people ask about them. Yes. No, probably more than that. There's a lot of people that, that says something about the redhead. Yeah. It's so funny. No redheads. No redheads. All clear. That's nothing against redheads. No. <laughs> okay, I gotta move on. What is our favorite part about being parents? That one's so hard. We need I, about two hours to answer this question. It's. I mean, how do you describe something that you've like hoped for for so mm. long? You finally have it. Yeah. Times five. I don't. It's, it's every, amazing. It's <laughs> everything you'd expect it to be and more. I guess. Like. Yeah. Like it is a generic answer, but we just love. Our little babies. Yeah. Like, they're awesome. It is really cool to be raising something. Raising something. Raising a, a small human that, like, looks at you and smiles every yeah. time you see them. Yeah. Special. Super special. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. That's our favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> is that it's special. Them. Yeah. Anyways. How have the babies changed our social life? How have the babies changed our relationship and relationships with other family members and friends? 
That's a... It's a good question. Loaded question. It's a loaded question. Yeah. It's completely reshifted everything Mm -hmm. in our life. And I'm not saying that is bad, Mm -hmm. but like the babies take priority over everything else. Mm -hmm. So um, we lived a pretty social life before the babies were here. Um, we would host a lot. That's kind of like our thing. We like we do a lot of like last minute things with yes. people and always ready to jump in on that kind of stuff. Game nights, stuff like that. And um, we have had a couple, but definitely not nearly as much. We've and, had a lot of people have actually been really willing to come and hang out with us here, mm-hmm. which has been really nice. And that's been fun. I would say social life, where it used to be very wide, has gotten way more focused mm-hmm. on probably just a few friends. Yeah, for which sure. is okay. Like mm-hmm. we. Don't have time. <laughs> I think that's been one of the more difficult things, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's yep. been worth it 100%. I would always trade. I would always make the trade we've made. And then with just family, I would say, like, in terms of changing relationships with family members, no relationship has been changed, mm-hmm. but it has, it's made us kind of rethink about where we live, stuff like that. Yeah. Like, just like technicalities, I guess. Technicalities, yeah. Like, unfortunately, our families are kind of all over the place. Yeah, they really spread out. Really spread out over the country. And you're trying to navigate that. I, I guess I think a lot more about that. Like, what does the future look like? Mm-hmm. And how do we be close to family members? Um, but we're figuring that out. We don't really have the answers just yet. No. But there has not... I wouldn't say anything has been negative. No. It's just... I, it's been... Reshifted and reshift, yeah. the table looks different. Yeah, that's yeah. a good way to put it. Nice. Moving on. Moving on. Next question. Changing up topics a little bit here. Very briefly, how did we meet? Um, okay. I'm going to try and make this really, really brief. <laughs> My roommate in college was friends with somebody you knew. Mm-hmm. And we went to an on-campus... Uh, well, on campus. Campus Crusade for Christ. Yeah. Nice. What would you call it? On campus ministry? Yeah. Thing, meeting for the beginning of the semester. And you were there. Obviously, we were there. And she was like, oh, hey, Graham. Let's all hang out at Krispy Kreme. That was really cool. And I thought <laughs> I thought it was going to be like a big group of us going. And it literally just ended up being me, my friend, her friend, and Graham. Mm-hmm. And that was it. And then we basically hung out in Krispy Kreme. None of us bought donuts. I got, you got chocolate milk. I got an ice water. Got a chocolate milk. I don't and even then, drink milk, but I think I was too nervous, so I got a chocolate milk. <laughs> and we just like sat there. I feel bad for um, my friends because they just like sat across the booth while we were talking, and we just like chatted up. And then, yeah. except in the booth, I was sitting there, and Stephanie was sitting here. Yeah. 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 But yeah, then we just kind of created like a big friend group and all hung out. I want to talk more about the first night though. Briefly. Okay, go ahead. St- Stephanie's from Washington State, mm-hmm. moved to North Carolina for school. Mm-hmm. And I had, she just drove across the country mm-hmm. with her family. And then I had just finished driving across the country with my brother. So we like related a lot to yeah. driving across the country, which is cool. Yeah. And, um, and Hot Rod. And Hot Rod. We talked about the movie Hot Rod. We mm-hmm. hit it off. Um, and I, long story short, it, we just really... Worked out. I, I I think I messaged her that night on Facebook. I have no, I don't remember. Yeah, we hung out a lot after that. We hung out as friends for a few weeks, and then we went on our first date oh, after yeah. that, and we dated hard. <laughs> <laughs> talked about serious things right off the bat. I think we talked we about we, marriage. We did. We talked about marriage the night you asked me to be your girlfriend. Yeah, I just said, "What's the point of this mm-hmm. if we're not trying to get married?" Yeah. So, you want to have quintuplets later? Yeah, if you if you're down. Um, just kidding. We didn't talk about that. Yes. Yeah, so Krispy Kreme is where the love happens. There we go. Right? Oh. That's how we met? Yep. That's brief. I think we'll have a podcast episode more of our story. Okay. Yeah. Sometime. Sounds good to me. I like our story. Mm-hmm. This is a very good question that we got. Um, and again, could talk forever on it. How will we protect our marriage covenant and keep our marriage alive the divorce rate is extremely high for parents with high order multiples. Which I don't know if that's a statistic or if it's just. Yeah, I don't think there's around. like any. Sti- I don't think but I think, is, but I think through public yeah, publicity, right. people can see. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm answering that. Sure. 
one, I actually do think this has made our marriage stronger. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what the future holds with how raising kid these kiddos, but like, I think because we both love kids so much, mm-hmm. and like we know that we're doing this together, I think that's what's gonna like keep it strong. Does that make sense? Hundred percent. And also like communication. I mean, I feel like that's such a cliche thing about like relationships. I'm sorry. You burped so bad. <laughs> that's how we're gonna keep the love alive. Is oh man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I burped everyone. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Anyways, this is like the most serious one. I know. It just <laughs> it just happened. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I feel like as cliche as it sounds, and I feel like a lot of people say this, but like, how do you make a marriage work? Whatever is like. Open communication is so key. It is. Like if you're not talking about things, you're not gonna figure things out and you're not gonna know like things that are happening. This was one of the scary things for me when we when we had mm-hmm. originally mm-hmm. found out Steph mm-hmm. was pregnant was like Yeah, you yeah. Yeah, like you can I we joined a Facebook group and a lot of the couples in that Facebook group who have high order multiples, their marriages didn't work out. Um, and we don't know the reasons why. Yes. I, it could be because of the kids. It could be com- because of something completely different. I do not say that as, yeah. out of like a judgment. But yeah. um, I agree with this question. Like it is apparent. It seems like it's high. And it's because it's high stress. I'm, yeah. um, and I got sad that. because we're best friends. Yeah. And um, I don't like the idea of like ruining my relationship with my best friend. Yeah. Um, so, but the only thing I... You look at the world today, divorce rate is high across the board. Yes. I think that's a really good point to make. Um, I don't it, think it's just because of high order multiples. Yeah. Those marriages didn't work out. Yep. So the steps that we're going to take, as Stephanie said, is communication. Um, actually, before we got married, we both went through personal biblical counseling. Mm-hmm. It really taught us a lot about being honest about our feelings, mm-hmm. talking to each other. And that was a great thing to work through before mm-hmm. all this. And I'm sure it's yeah. going to pay dividends in all of this. Yeah. Um, so communication is going to be big. Um, our faith is central to everything we do. Mm-hmm. And so I think that centers us and it grounds yeah. us. And it, it's, it grounds us in the promise and the covenant that we made mm-hmm. to each other. I was going to say, if you understand the word covenant, yeah, then it's like, I'm like, I'm... I'm not going to let that go. Yeah. Like, we're not going to let that go. Like, there, there's so much more to that than just being married, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. It's um, in sickness and in health till death do us part. Mm-hmm. A covenant isn't, I don't feel like it anymore. Yeah. It's we're committed to doing this. Yeah. And um, I would also say we've seen very good examples on both ends of our family mm-hmm. of two sets of parents that have said, we're staying together. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool to look at that. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else there. There we could talk about this for hours. Yeah. Um, this could be an episode in itself. But yes, I. I also think through it all, to make sure we don't always take it super seriously. Mm, that's a good point. Of like, our life is not going to be perfect. Like no. You know, we got to, we're, we're basically throwing comparison out the window mm-hmm. and like our life is probably going to be madness mm-hmm. and completely different than anybody else's. And we're going to be okay with that. And we're, we're in the trenches together Yeah. and it actually excites me Yeah. more than anything. Yeah. So teamwork, teamwork. I don't know I'm doing pinky. I don't know. But yes, go. we're going to stay married as heck. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. Married for life. There you go. Yeah. We're pro marriage. Next question. <laughs> Let's okay. quickly change topics. How do we get anything done? How do we get anything done? That's actually a really good question. I don't know if I know the answer to. We don't. To. We, uh... I mean, seriously. <laughs> we do get things done. It just takes a while. Like I said... It and... probably takes a few days to get one task done. Yes. No, I, I will say I, that's why a schedule is so important. Mm-hmm. Because if we're not on that schedule, then things don't get done. Yeah. Or things are having to get done at a different time, and then it messes up everything else. Mm-hmm. So I think if we if we stick to the schedule, it works out fine. Discipline equals freedom. So saying like, 
hey, we're going to be really rigid with our days. It seems overwhelming, but it creates opportunities to sit down and do stuff like this. Yeah. We, we are in control of the day. Yeah. The day does not control us. I'm not saying it's always like that, but that's our goal. <laughs> yeah, it's we not are not perfect like whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. But we're learning. Yeah. And like I said earlier in the video, how we are right now is much better than what it was mm -hmm. even a month ago. We're getting a little bit yeah. better hold of it. Yeah. Um, and them sleep through the night really helps. Yeah. Because we have the day, the actual day. For sure. So. The last thing I'll say about this, though, is something I'm reminding myself of is I, uh, one could say I'm an over, I, I, oh, the better word is, one could say I am ambitious. That is a great word. To <laughs> so I try to always <laughs> knock out very ambitious goals and I am being humbled very quickly these yeah. days. Yeah. And there are a lot of days where I'm like, dang, I didn't get that done. Dang, I didn't get that done. But what's something we say? At the end of the day, we kept five babies alive. Yeah. And thriving. And thriving. And, and it's happy. like, if that's all we do this first year, hmm. I hope that's not all we do. But if <laughs> that is all we do, that is success. Yeah. And um, yeah. That's good. So schedule is helping us get things done. Yep. yep. Cool. Yep. How do we stay patient and loving through the chaos? Here's the thing. I don't really see it as chaotic. I would agree. Yeah. So. It's just nonstop. Again, yeah. like it hasn't been chaotic because, again, I think we learned so much through the NICU. Yeah. Um, yeah, there just hasn't been that much of a chaotic moment yet. So it hasn't been a challenge to stay loving. No. Um, or patient. Yeah, we... So maybe like the next question is, have we totally lost our cool yet? No. We haven't. We stayed pretty calm. There's been a couple moments where we share a house. Mm -hmm. um, we live at Stephanie's parents' house right now as we kind of get on our feet with these babies. Mm -hmm. And there are moments where it'd be like nice to have our own place. Yeah. And I think Stephanie's parents may watch this video. I think they understand that <laughs> we feel that way and they know that. Mm -hmm. Um so sometimes it can get a little stressful in that regard. It's not even stressful. It's just, just you just want it to be your family. Yes. But at the same time, it's been a, overall a much bigger blessing than it has yes. been an annoyance. Yes, by for sure. Tenfold. Yeah. And it's, um, I would say part of the huge success of why the babies are doing so well is because we don't have a huge mortgage or a hoard a hoard <laughs> or a huge rent payment to make we can just focus on being parents so take everything with a grain of salt yep. no cool has been lost no cool has been yost, lost <laughs> <laughs> it's We're getting too late okay you want to get that one yeah oh this is a good one this is a good question what's something that has been easier than expected and something that has been more difficult than expected you go ahead. I thought you said you were going to answer it. Okay, I'll answer. <laughs> okay. Um, I can't ask the question and answer it mm. right away. Honestly, this is way too generic, but raising five babies has been easier than expected. Yes, I was thinking the same <laughs> thing. I don't know any. Yeah. And if we wanted to get more specific, maybe just the like feeding them, I was really worried like how will we do it? We found these prop pillows that work great. You're not really supposed to prop a pillow, but or prop a bottle. But we got to do what we got to do, yeah. and it's working. So I think that's been e like, uh, uh, yeah, it has. It has been, been easier. Now, what has been more difficult than expected is the bottles again. Yeah, I was, dude, I was like, I think bottles. <laughs> I will look forward to the day when we do not have to clean bottles. Same. But Same. we got a few days until that is. Yeah. Wow. I did order a baby Brezza bottle cleaner, but it's still not bottle here. Washer. Bottle it's washer. On, it's on pre order. Oh, it's baby Brezza, if you see this it's video, please send me that product because it, it will, will change, change our, our lives. Life. So <laughs> we need it. Um, diapers have not been that annoying. No. I actually like that's not part of the question. But people always think diapers are annoying. Oh yeah, you always you're gonna change so many diapers. But it's like honestly, while you're changing your diaper, your baby's just looking there like okay. it's smiling and so I love yeah. it. It's like the. I would say when you do diapers, actually, is like the best time to have like face to face interaction with one single baby. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's nice. Cool. Anyways, we're kind of changing topics here. 
What fertility treatment did we pursue? We did IUI or ovulation induction and IUI. A lot of people think we did IVF and implanted five embryos, and we did not do that. I'm going to put that right out there. Hmm. That was not what we did. Because I feel like, I think one of the questions people ask, like, how many eggs did we? Many, yeah, we, we always get like, how many embryos did you implant or whatever? And, and that's not what happened. Yeah, I think one comment was like, how could you be so careless and implant five babies? It's like, this was not, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't intentional. No. Now that it's here, we love them. Yeah. yeah. Um, any tips or advice for the waiting phase during uh, fertility treatments? Or mm. if during infertility, I guess. I feel like no words will help this. Yeah. Because I know, we know what it's like. Mm -hmm. Does, is it like two weeks you wait? Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess this question is specifically talking about. I don't know about, if that's talking about that. I think it's talking about just like while you're waiting to try and get pregnant. Mm. Well, yeah, regardless if it's the like you're waiting to take the test or just like the whole fertility process, um, it's hard. Yeah, there's a lot of anticipation there. Um, have hope. Mm -hmm. have faith and talk to other people yeah that's we've talked about that yeah. before like we had a really good community and we were constantly talking about it with other people people prayed for us mm -hmm. that helped the um it helped the days when you found out you weren't pregnant yeah yeah for yeah. sure um i would say kind of the only thing um in this doesn't apply to everybody, so I don't know if this will, is really that helpful, but maybe it can be, is um, I always knew that the Lord was going to give us a kid. Hmm. Didn't know it was going to be five. <laughs> I always knew that because that was something that I desired, and the Bible says the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. Hmm. And, and I didn't know what the process was going to be like, how long it was going to take. I just knew it was going to happen. So I think like, knowing that and trusting that process and knowing that what we were going to go through was ultimately going to be a cool story and not a cool story, but was going to be a glorifying story. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I feel like that made it easier. Yeah. Does that make sense? hundred percent. So, but that is specific to me who has faith in the Lord. Yeah. That's so. good though. It, it that changed the the whole thing changed the game yeah for all of it so i hope that helps it's not easy though no. it, i feel like we're just brushing over it because we have to answer so many questions but if you ask that question we did talk about it in another we did do we an did, infertility yeah. video we, though trying to maybe watch that not that we're experts but no it's not easy i that's one of those things where like it's almost better just to say i'm sorry rather than mm -hmm. here's how to feel better but don't be in it alone. Get other people involved mm -hmm. in the process and that at the end. That would help. Even if it's just one person. Even if it's just one person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. How did we, or when and how did we find out about the genders of the babies? So that's kind of funny because we actually had an ultrasound that the tech thought said that it was uh, two boys and three girls. Mm-hmm. Which was like really exciting. I was like, that's a really great mix. And then at 16 weeks, found out it was actually four and one. And it was, you were a little heartbroken at first. <laughs> but honestly, I couldn't, we couldn't come up with a second boy's name. It was so hard. And so, and now that we have four and one now, I, it's so fun. I like, yeah. I can't picture anything different. They flopped on us for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. We were kind of weird in this in the sense of if we were only gonna have one baby, our plan all along was to never find the gender until yes, that, the day that of the is birth. Kind of funny. Yep. And then with I just couldn't I, I didn't know you could I wait until they were born. I thought like, all right, once well, again, they're just gonna tell us. Mm -hmm. But it, I feel like it just happened very much in the moment. It was an ultrasound. I was like, yeah. and here are the genders, and I was like. Yeah, let's just go ahead and know. I want to stop referring re referring to them as baby A, baby B, baby C. Which we did still do that. We kind of did that. But, but we, we, were, we knew like, oh, her, oh, him. Yes. Which was It personalized still. it a little bit more. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I don't know exactly what week it was. 16. 16. Um, 
and we never really did a major gender reveal or anything no. like that. We just, we wanted to focus on the pregnancy. Yep. So cool. How many diapers do we go through? 30 a day. Give or take. Yeah. Yeah. Probably average 30. Towards the beginning, it was a little bit higher. It was probably closer to 50. Yeah. Um, cause it, well, yeah, cause they weren't sleeping through the night too. Mm-hmm. So they don't change them in the middle of the night. But we'll keep this, we'll keep it sweet. Yeah. About 30 to 50 diapers a day. And we've gone through about 2,600 diapers. Since they've been home. Since they've been home out of the NICU. Yep. Nice. This is an interesting question. Do any of the babies have allergies? None that we are aware of. Yeah. So. And I, before all this, I thought you were born with allergies, but apparently they develop based on immune reactions. Oh, my didn't Is know what that. a doctor told me. Hmm. While, while they're in the NICU, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So I don't really know when all that develops, but we, I guess... A better way to put it is the babies have had no adverse reactions yeah. to anything. Nope. Yeah. We don't know of any allergies so far. How much crying is there? It's just us. What? <laughs> just us crying? Yeah, like happy tears. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look at this. This is... Yeah, but we... they're like supposed to be sleeping. Yeah, I guess now. so. But this is what they all... They don't cry that much. They, don't. they cry before feed times. That's pretty much it. Or... That evening fee, after that evening fee, before we get them in bed. Yeah. They, when they start to get tired. That's pretty much it though. Yeah. They're, they're happy babies. They are. They're we keep them fed though, you know? <laughs> yeah. We keep those tummies full. Mm -hmm. That helps. <laughs> yeah. Or they fuss if they have like a bubble in their tummy and they got a burp or, or two or something. I keep saying I really want. Not like a strong cry when they do that. It's more of a whine. Yeah. That's true. Um. I keep saying I really want like a video of all of them just like losing it. And it just hasn't happened. And it just. But it, okay. But it when we've gotten close to that happening, it's like, we don't have time to take a video of it. We got yeah. we Usually it's like we got to get bottles ready. It's time to go. Yeah. yeah. So. But honestly, not a lot not of crying. Much, not a lot of crying. No. Yeah. <gasps> What's on the baby's Christmas list? Formula. <laughs> Diapers. Wipes. Yep. That's it. That's about it. <laughs> They don't need anything else. They got everything else they need. They got everything they need. I mean, they're going to get those anyways, but. Um, yeah, I, I was trying to think of a funny thing that would be I, nothing. Yeah. I am excited for Christmas as a head, though. That would be so much fun. I'm, I'm really excited for next year's Christmas. I'm excited for this year's Christmas, but next year's I'm really excited for because they're going to not necessarily fully understand, but they'll understand a little more. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to open presents, which would be cute. An avocado. An avocado, thanks. <laughs> if you know, you know. Yep. Do we have any other kids? Nope. First, we went hard this yep. first round. Go big or go home. That's yeah. what I always say. We know someone that had kids before a high order multiples mm -hmm. um, situation. And honestly, I'm like, those that family is the true rock stars. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how... Great, they run their family. Yeah, they do. And, I, and we got to know them in Phoenix, and it was like, it gave me hope. I was yeah. like, I know that we can do this. Yep. Um, it's really cool though that our first <laughs> I know. round is quintuplets, and I'm just really excited to see how they all yeah. grow up. And I feel like it's, we're gonna have a really tight family. I know it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Now on top of that, do we want any more kids? We absolutely do. We like kids a lot. Yeah, I think. That has been a interesting thing to hear from people. Like, mm -hmm. oh, one and done. You definitely don't need to have any more after this. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I think it's this idea that kids are annoying, for yeah. a nuisance, and we don't think that way at all. Um, I would take as many kids as we can get, and yeah. financially can afford. <laughs> one one could argue we can't afford five babies this right is, now. This either. is probably true. <laughs> We're making it work. We're making it work. Um, yeah, I we love kids. And mm -hmm. I think I'm already in the spot of like, oh, I'm only going to have like a few more weeks where you're like this. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want another baby so I can enjoy this again one day. <laughs> you? Yeah, we just we'll have to think about how we want to go about doing that. Yeah. And... Quintuplets <clears throat> round two? Nope. Okay, not round two. You heard it here, folks. But if it happens, then I, I'm not saying no to it. Hmm. But I'm not, I don't want to try and do that again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're almost done. Kind of a deeper question here. Mm -hmm. How are we experiencing God's presence the most right now in our life? I mean, I feel like every time I see these babies, hmm. I don't like I don't know what to 
say more. I mean, that's where I see it the most. Like, they shouldn't be here. Yeah. You know? The so, odds were not good. No. No. From the very beginning, mm. they should not have been here. So. And not only should they not be here, they shouldn't be this healthy. Yeah. You shouldn't be this healthy. Yeah. Um, it was scary. It's a scary thing. Mm-hmm. So, I just, my, um, my relationship with God, I think, kind of like relation, social life relationships, I feel like my relationship with God has reshifted in a sense too, yeah. of just like, yeah, I believe God can do anything. Mm-hmm. Like, I just have faith now. Yeah. Like, he did this, why can't I trust him for the next thing? Yeah. Um, and how do I feel his presence the most? Like Steph said, every time I look into my baby's face and they smile back at me, it's like, God did this, it's because of him. And it's so cool. We're not going to tear up on this video. (laughs) Um, There are many moments where we both just kind of tear up because they're just beautiful. And um, it's really cool to be a part of it. And um, we just give him all the glory and we thank him and we love him for it. And um, I will say we still go to church. Mm -hmm. How many weeks have we gone in a row? I think it's like five or six. Yeah, we've gone about five or six weeks in a row. And I will say church is different too. Yeah. Like it's hard just to sit there and pay attention to the sermon. Because <laughs> you're holding a baby. You're holding a baby. And you're distracted by them because they're so sweet. Um, so even church is different. And learning to um, experience God in other ways mm-hmm. has been good. We've seen his hand at work in mm-hmm. our lives and we just trust him all the more, I'd say. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we are here on the last question, Stephanie. What is it? Or do we have any specific prayer requests? Obviously, just pray for the babies yeah. specifically. Well, it's, it says specific. Any specific, yeah. I think I, I got a good one. Yeah. Winter's here. Like, we're approaching winter. It's always, I don't know, I think when you're a first-time parent and then it's your first winter, like, my mind goes to sickness and colds and all that. Mm-hmm. So... You always kind of worry a little bit about that and just pray for protection for the babies through that, that they stay safe. Mm-hmm. But I'm also not like crazy worried either. Yeah. Um, and This then, isn't very specific. It's actually pretty broad. But I think just like for us as parents and like raising, not even just like raising five kids, but just like raising kids. Mm-hmm. And I think also just like in this world. Yeah. It's a tough space to be in. So I just, that we would look for his guidance, Hmm. ultimately. And if someone wants to pray for me, I think, definitely feel the weight on my shoulders a lot. I'm happily Mm -hmm. wanting to do that. Learning how to take care of a big family Mm -hmm. is intimidating. There are moments of fear. And um, I think a lot about our future, where we end up, where we live, how I provide. We're in a weird balance, too, of like, I also need... I'm needed inside the home too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't just go out and get a job. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could. I don't want to act like right, I can't right, work. Right, right, right. But it, understanding that maybe that isn't the actual best thing right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're also acting like you don't work either. Yes. He does I do. still, he does still do work, work right now. But I am self employed. It's a lot yeah. of like, it's, it's, hustle different. And, it's a different type of pressure. Yeah. And um, yeah, just the pressure of it, I guess, is a good thing. Which again, what I just talked about, I trust God in all this. I know mm-hmm. it's going to be okay. Yeah, 48 questions. Do you want to add any more questions to the list? No. Do you want to say anything else? No. No. <laughs> I don't Time think for so. bed. I feel like that was. I good. hope there are so many questions. I hope it made sense. I hope we helped out and fill in the gaps. I'll do some editing there. We'll have to edit this, but I hope it filled in the gaps. Thank you so much for watching. And. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.